so happy that everyone is here this morning, and especially we're happy to have Chesley Kennedy here to preach, and we want to welcome him back to St. Thomas. He's been here before, and we hope he will come again also. Our service of morning prayer will begin on page 39 in the prayer book. You may want to follow in the prayer book. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. Continuing on page 41. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at His hands, to set forth His most worthy praise, to hear His holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship Him, let us kneel in silence and in penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. <clears throat> Almighty. Almighty and merciful Lord, grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of His Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 O Lord, open Thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth Thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 67. You'll find it in the insert to your bulletin or on page 675 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will read the psalm responsively by the half verse. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For we judge the peoples with equity and invite all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Glory to the Father and the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Our first reading appointed for this morning is from the Acts of the Apostles. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Tyathira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. 
Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace. I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Suffrages be. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us. O Lord, in Thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. O God, who has prepared for those who love Thee such good things as pass man's understanding, pour into our hearts such love towards Thee, that we, loving Thee in all things and above all things, may obtain the promises which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessings through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, 
and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that we, being ordered by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace, so clothe us in the Spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee for the honor of thy name. Amen. The General Thanksgiving on page 58. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we do not have a worthy service to speak in the humble and hearty place. For all thy goodness and all thy kindness to us and to all thy men, we will ask thee to our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of all the world, who lives and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever, and ever. Amen. The General Thanksgiving on page 512.
name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is wonderful to be here with you this morning. It's been a while since I last visited with you. I think it was last May that I was here, but it may have been the previous May now that some students were graduating and I was here with you. This morning I'm wearing the cassock and surplus that you gave me as a gift when I left St. Thomas in 2009 to head to New York City to do study work at the General Theological Seminary. So much has changed since then. I'm wearing glasses, we've broken hips, we've fractured heels. Also, I'm wearing this hood that I achieved at Duke Divinity School for my Master of Divinity degree. There's been a change of rector since I was last year. When I was an intern beginning the, the, the call to discernment here, Mother Vicki Smith was your priest. And it seems only recently that I was here for the installation of Father Rick as your new priest, but I was told now it's been almost three years in August. I gave my first sermon here at St. Thomas. That was in August, actually it was not in August of 2009, I was corrected this morning, it was May 2009, May 9th, 2009. Strangely enough, the exact same lectionary readings. There are many of, many of you whom I know we don't see any longer too. They are with us in the great cloud of witness, the communion of saints that we read of in Hebrews and speak of in our creeds. Since I was an intern here, I would have never imagined myself back here to preach without having had our bishop lay his hands on my head in the service of an ordination. I was sure that by now I'd be ordained. Changes occur in our lives. How often have we clapped our hands and sung hallelujah for joy, only to find that joy dissolved in expectations not met, hearts broken, jobs lost, relationships hurt, life. Changes often bring with them dark and lonely nights, sadness and fear of the unknown. Sometimes what is for our own good lies hidden from us. The expression, it's hard to see the forest for the trees. I recently read a wonderful ancient rabbinic story of one of my favorite prophets, the prophet Elijah. Elijah met a rabbi walking along one day who wished to journey with him. Elijah said the rabbi could join him, but only if the rabbi would not ask for explanations of any of Elijah's actions. If he did, the rabbi and Elijah would have to part ways. So the story goes, Elijah and the rabbi went forth together until they reached the home of a poor man whose only earthly possession was a cow. The man and his wife were thoroughly good-hearted people, and they received the two wanderers with a warm welcome. They invited the guests into their homes, a home set before them food and drink of the very best kind, and made up a comfortable bed for them to rest. When Elijah and the rabbi were ready to continue their journey on the following day, Elijah prayed that the cow belonging to his host would die. And so it did. The single most valuable possession of this good couple was dead. This mis their misfortune and Elijah's prayer shocked the rabbi, but he remembered his agreement with Elijah not to ask for any explanations. So the next night, they traveled on, they arrived at a very wealthy man's home, who when summoned to the door would not even come. He did not even allow them to, he did allow them to stay in his home, but he didn't provide them food or drink, <coughs> or even comfortable beds. On the rich man's property, there was a wall that had tumbled down, and the rich man really wished he could get that wall repaired. So before they left, Elijah prayed that the wall would be rebuilt. And lo and behold, the wall stood upright all on its own. Again, the rabbi remembers his agreement not to ask for any explanations from Elijah. The story of Elijah and the rabbi continued through other, other, several other permeations. But at the end of the story, the rabbi finally has the opportunity to ask Elijah to clear up some of the freakish actions Elijah had taken 
for the good but poor man to make his cow die, and for the not so hospitable rich man for his wall to be rebuilt. Elijah clears up his conduct as follows. The poor man's cow was killed because I knew that on the same day the death of his wife had been ordained in heaven, and I prayed to God to accept the loss of the poor man's property as a substitute for the poor man's wife. As for the rich man, there was a treasure hidden under the dilapidated wall, and if he had rebuilt it, he would have found the gold. Hence, I set up the wall miraculously in order to deprive the old curmudgeon of the valuable find. Sometimes things happen in our lives that defy all explanation. In our reading from Acts today, it seems to me that a vision for Paul, which might otherwise defy all explanation, creates a change in Paul's plans. Things for Paul and those traveling with him had been going pretty well so far. They've been preaching to several churches all around the Jerusalem area, but their, their trip was relatively localized. And then Paul had a vision. In the vision, Paul sees a man from Macedonia, which we now know as Europe, pleading with him to come and help them. Keep in mind, this isn't a quick plane ride. This is a pretty big commitment for Paul and those traveling with him to leave Asia for Europe. This is a pretty big change for any ministry team, wouldn't you say? Imagine changing the direction of some wonderful ministry at Haines, uh, here at St. Thomas and expecting that change and everybody affected by it to agree. I would say that's pretty hard to imagine. <laughs> it would be hard to see the forest for the trees. It would seem to defy all explanation. All this change based on a vision. It's not surprising to read about visions in our scripture. But I made the mistake once of joking while speaking to a small group that those of us who had visions or hear voices or eh, we should probably get our heads examined. Immediately after my talk, a line formed person after person, telling me of their own experiences of hearing or seeing or having some mystical experience of a loving and caring God. I think I was a bit embarrassed of my own experience of hearing that still, small voice calling for me to fear not. Child, you don't have to be afraid unless you want to be afraid. These were the words of comfort, wisdom, and love from a caring God. In these days, we are often afraid to reveal our vision, our call, as expressed by what we do with our own lives, the call that reveals Jesus Christ in us. In this call, we will always see nothing other than love. I am moved by stories of individuals who feel led by Jesus to act out of love for others. Some of you may have seen the article in the Greensboro newspaper this morning or heard the news story yesterday about a young man at High Point University who will graduate or who graduated yesterday. I missed all the details, but the young man was confined to a wheelchair. My ears perked up, though, when I heard an older gentleman saying, I felt called by Jesus. This gentleman pushed, volunteered, and pushed this young man in his wheelchair five days a week since he was in high school, all the way through college. That sounds like a vision worthy of Jesus. I think of faithful community leaders, such as many of you here, who have worked with the least of these, especially those persons in our community who need food or shelter, or those who are willing to pick someone up from home and bring him, and her, him or her to church. That sounds like a vision worthy of Jesus. The gospel reading appointed for today is the stuff mystics like me love. You can't read this scripture literally, or you lose the point altogether. Several weeks now after our Easter celebration, we find ourselves reading from a discourse that occurs before the crucifixion of Jesus. In the discourse from the Gospel of John, we hear Jesus offering to his disciples an explanation of how he will remain with them after he's gone. In this reading, 
we hear this same offer to us today. A man named Judas asked Jesus, how will you reveal yourself to us? If you're going away, how can you still be with us? What about all this change? If you take time to read John 14, you will hear again and again Jesus alerting the disciples that they will not face the future alone. That the gifts of God, the gift of God, has been given to them in Jesus and does not terminate with the end of Jesus' life. We are moved to the assurance that with the resurrection we receive the gift of the advocate, the counselor. The Holy Spirit will continue to teach us and to comfort us, even after we do not see Jesus. The scripture doesn't say that life won't include change or difficulty, sadness, or despair. In fact, if anything, it assures us of death. In fact, for the disciples, it assures them of a difficult life and a martyr's death. It also assures us of the presence of the Spirit and indwelling of Jesus Christ and the Father among us as the community of believers. In their deep despair, Jesus' preaching offers his disciples the good news of the love of God and of the abiding presence of God with them, even when the circumstances of their lives might indicate otherwise. Do not let your hearts be troubled or fearful when change comes. We are given the peace of Jesus Christ that remains with us always. In those times that we might label good, and in those times we might want to label bad. Sometimes the good and the bad defy all explanation. Remember the poor man's cow and the rich man's wall? Abide in God's ever-present and unchanging love. Now, may God give us his blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I again want to thank Chesley for an excellent message this morning. Um, and when I do 8.30 service, I get to hear the sermon twice. And I was glad to be able to hear it twice this morning. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone with us. If you are a visitor, we would ask that you sign the register in the narthex before you leave. And I also want to welcome back Dottie Worth.
Steve has kept us well informed of your progress along the way, and we're so happy that you're able to be back with us today, especially with the weather like it is. Well, you take care of yourself. Don't yeah. follow. Uh, please look at the calendar of events on the back page of the bulletin, uh, the information coming up. And I ask that you especially read the announcement about the consecration of our Bishop Suffragan, uh, the Reverend Ann Elliott Hodges Koppel. Uh, she will be consecrated Saturday, June the 15th at 1030 in Duke Chapel in Durham and a reception will take place. If you go to the reception, it'll cost you $10. If you would like to go to the consecration service, please let our office know here before May 16th because we have to order the tickets. And the tickets are gonna be given out based on the demand from the parishes. So please go ahead and get your information in if you'd like to go. Um, uh, there is, uh, Elizabeth Pugh asked me to announce at 8.30, there is a sign-up sheet up here on the piano for Lemonade on the Lawn. We hope to start that next Sunday, uh, if there's no snow on the ground. Uh, <laughs> please, if you would like to sign up for Lemonade, it'll be on top of the piano. Come get it before you leave and sign for the Sunday you would like. Uh, or multiple Sundays would be fine. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? All right. Mr. Kennedy? Oh. Walk in love as Christ loves us, for such is pleasing to God.
things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve thy sick servants and give the power of healing to those who minister to their needs. And especially this day we pray for Plum Trent, Marion Saferit, Mavis Simon, Janie Vernon, Robbie City, Dud and Pat Apple, Bill Lightes, Pam Harding, Alex Beaton, Beth Smith, Ann Montaigne, Emily Cass, Charles Robertson, Earl Raphael, Betty Sigmund, Naomi Gullickson, Mary Gullickson, David Buckmaster, Fred Jr., Fred Sr., Amanda G., Billy Agia, Michelle and Daryl Robertson, Todd and Devin Citizen, Ezra Robertson, Vicki Slaughter, Linda, Bob Love, Sylvia Morell, Emmeline Jenkins, Laura Stone, Reverend John Burton, Otis Hutcherson, Perry Gann, Jim Fawcett, Sybil Gatewood, Stephanie Robertson, Barbara and Ron Davenport, J.C. Parks, Vivian Sykeleather, Dottie Worth, Eric Filippi, Dallas and Lynn, Kay Donovan, also Kyle Schneider, and any others who you wish to remember at this time. We pray that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in thy loving care through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we remember this day before thee thy faithful servants, Emily Giles and Henry Pollock, and we pray that having opened to them the gates of larger life, thou wilt receive them more and more into thy joyful service, that with all who have faithfully served thee in the past, they may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Scott Smith and Nancy Marin, as they begin another year of their lives. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen the, their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, in particular Father Rick, Dion, Caitlin, and Chris, as they journey home. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. 
Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us this day, the rest of this week, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.